After taking my giant robots out to events for the first time last year, I realized how much time and effort it took to assemble and take it down. About three hours each way. So I embarked on a quest to make it easier on myself with some new parts and new tools. But before I begin, be sure to uh, like and subscribe and, you know, share the video with your friends if it's something you enjoy. And of course, check out the website nymechworks.com where there's all sorts of cool information about the mechs that hasn't made it to the uh, YouTube yet. And also a link to the merch store where you can get your t-shirts and coffee mugs. Now, the first order of business is that I somehow managed to tear the auger off the snowblower that propels it. And I have no idea where it went. So, we'll mount it onto the frame like a horse. But, you know, backwards to push it along. And we'll just attach it using some bolts there. Now next we'll need some supports on the back of the snowblower to keep it from tipping backwards. And attach those with some 3 8 inch bolts. Gotta drill them holes. And then whack them bolts in. Now we just gotta take a break to swap the saw horse. Mech horse over to the other side to install the other snowblower support. And we'll just do the same old song and dance, you know, drill the holes, put in the bolts, tighten on the nuts. And now we gotta chop off that excess wood. And now remove the mech horse. Beautiful. Now I got tired of using the brake cables to move the transmission. So I figured on using a pair of synchronized actuators instead. Putting together a single quick disconnect will be much easier than having to adjust tension on the cables. So we'll just be mounting this actuator onto the snowblower here with some PVC bits. I also figured on making a better torso bearing by removing the wheel off of a large pneumatic caster. So now the torso will rotate nice and smooth. Now before we do any more transmission silliness, we gotta put the torso on. Let's just get that winch cable on there. And up we go! And let's wriggle that thing in there to do some fine adjustments. And we're all set. Now let's remove them old bike cables and install the new transmission stick. Which is just a bit of PVC with a double pull, double throw switch on the end inside of some fancy 3D printed bits. Now we'll plop that new actuator on there. Well, not so new, it's salvaged. See, these things have a tendency for the rod to fly out of the end, so oftentimes you gotta stuff them back in there and, and keep the end cap on with some zip ties. All right, now to avoid any uh, high current electrical fire shenanigans, we'll be using a small LiPo battery to test out the system. So when I push the switch back on the transmission stick, the actuator moves the lever back, and the same wires from the lever actuator run down to the snowblower actuator, 
pushing the snowblower's transmission lever back. So they're more or less synchronized. So we can get rid of this wiry, cable-y mess. Yeah. Now, browsing YouTube, I saw this here cardboard Gundam cockpit video. And I figured, hey, what a good idea. Control handles with buttons on them. So we'll just toss out them old controls and assemble some new ones. Just gotta put them push buttons into them 3D printed bits. Now the ergonomics are not too shabby. These buttons will control the shoulders while twisting that handle will move the elbow. The buttons will be connected to a polarity reversing double pole double throw relays to control the motors, just like the power armor. So now that we have the spaghetti all connected with quick disconnect, let's see what it can do. Alright, got some compound movements. And the levers move none too shabby. However, after a bit of practice, I noticed the controls felt kind of awkward. Especially having to press a ring and pinky buttons. So I've upgraded to using instead a few polarity reversing switches in there. So now it's a lot simpler, requires less finger work, and they're oriented more or less to correspond to the natural arm movement. But this switch here moves your arm up and down. Well, this one twists it in and out. There's still the button-controlled relays for the elbow. So we'll be reusing the um, uh, first iteration arm controllers, situating the new ones about halfway down. So we'll just cut off the old ones, and attach the new ones. And plop it in the mech. and wire up the big spaghetti mess. Here we go. Now let's try out them arms. Alright, got some pretty good uh, compound arm movements. A lot easier than using them there push buttons, I'll say. Now that we've got the arms down pat, let's drive. 
and I'll take it nice and easy because I don't want to strain any of the system. There we go. Seems to be driving all right. Now let's look inside the cockpit and see what a mess it is. We got ourselves an ignition key with a little hat that goes over it and an indicator light. Some ventilation fans. Overhead lights. push buttons to turn off each arm controller, and a three camera CCTV system so I can see outside. However, after taking it to a local convention, I still found it much too troublesome to assemble. So tune in next time to see the PVC overhaul and how well that went. or lack thereof. <laughs> and remember, if they don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs>